Hi everyone! Tonight's video is an introduction to evolution and natural selection. So how did the tremendous diversity of life found on Earth today evolve? Well, if we look at a phylogenetic tree of life, which shows the three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryota, what we see is that all life forms are linked. They're linked by evolution. They all evolved from a common ancestor. We often refer to the common ancestor to life as the last universal common ancestor. And I've circled in green on the phylogenetic tree where you would find the last universal common ancestor. I often get asked in class, well, where is Luca? Can you show me? Well, there is no more of this last common ancestor living. It was likely a very tiny microscopic single cell organism, not unlike a bacteria or an archaea, but we don't have any today for me to show you. What do I mean by evolution? What is the definition of evolution if all of these life forms evolved from LUCA? Well, if you look up evolution in the dictionary, you'll get something like descent with modification. What does that mean? That's not very helpful at all. What evolution is, is it means that the characteristics of a population change over time. And by time, I mean many generations. And the characteristics change to adapt to the environment. Now you notice that I have two asterisks next to population. That's because it's very important to realize that individuals cannot evolve. Only the characteristics of a population can evolve. And I'm gonna go through a scenario to demonstrate that later in this video. But first I wanna talk about what forces the change in the characteristics of a population. Or if that was restated, what is the driving force for evolution? Well, the driving force is natural selection. And when you think of natural selection, of course you think of Charles Darwin and his voyage of the ship, the Beagle, which left from Plymouth, England, and went and stopped in various places around the world. And he's most famous for his observations of different life forms on the Galapagos Islands. He's famous for his observations of the shape and size of the beaks of different finch populations on different islands. And what he found was that the shape and size of the beak correlated to the food sources available on the different islands. He also did some studies on the different tortoise populations on each of the different Galapagos islands. They all had different shell shapes and neck lengths. This is a picture of Lonesome George, who was the last member of his species on one specific Galapagos island, and he died many years ago. While Darwin was on the Galapagos islands, he made two observations. First of all, there is variation between individuals of a species. Second of all, there is overproduction of offspring. So let's look at these two observations. The first one, variation between individuals of a species. If you look at this population of ducks, you can see that there's variation in their feather color. It varies from very dark to kind of a lighter colored, multicolored to finally a pure white feathers. And then if you look at this population of ducks, you can see this mother is completely overwhelmed by the overproduction of offspring. Darwin then made some inferences based on these two observations. The first observation, of course, was about the variation and differences between the members of a species, as shown here again by the population of ducks. Some of these members of the population will be better able to survive. They'll be better adapted to the environment. That was his first inference. Let's look at this scenario. Let's say there was a fox that was hunting these ducks. The fox is going to be able to eat the ducks, find the ducks that it can see the most easily. And that means that these very light colored ducks are going to be picked out easier by the fox and eaten. They won't survive and they won't be able to pass their genes on to the next generation. The survivors though, with the darker feathers, they will breed and they'll pass on their characteristics to the next generation. That means over time, after many, many generations, this population of ducks is much more likely to, to evolve, to have the favorable characteristics. In this case, that's the darker feathers that allows the ducks to camouflage so that they can hide from the fox. Those favorable characteristics accumulate in the population. So you can see that this population has evolved from a population that has several light colored ducks, medium and dark, to a population that is overwhelmingly has dark feathered ducks because the dark feathers are better adapted 
to this environment. What are the requirements for natural selection? Well, the requirements are for something called selective pressure and predators and limiting supplies of food and shelter are referred to as selective pressure. If there's overproduction of offspring, that implies that there are limiting resources or selective pressure. If we look at our population of ducks here again, what if there was no foxes or dogs or humans or wolves? In other words, there were no predators. And what if there was plenty of food, plenty of water and plenty of shelter? Does there any selective pressure on this population? Will natural selection be occurring? No, it won't. If there's plenty of food and water, so they're not competing for resources, and there's no predators, then there's no selective pressure, and we won't see any natural selection. So in other words, in order to see natural selection, we have to see selective pressure. There has to be a limiting resource or predator. So what you should know from this video, you should know that natural selection is the driving force for evolution. You should know that the definition of evolution is that the characteristics of a population change over time, and by time I mean many generations. You should very much know that individuals cannot evolve, only populations can evolve. You should know Darwin's two observations, and you should know Darwin's two inferences based on those observations. So that's all for tonight. 